Hey guys, um, happy Thor's Day. <laughs> um, I think for most people today, Thor Ragnarok hits theaters. I always say Ragnarok, Ragnarok, Ragnarok. Yes, with the O. Movie today. And look what I got. I ordered this last week in celebration of Thor Ragnarok. So this is the third movie in the Thor franchise. And this is my pop action figure of Valkyrie, who's played by um, Tessa Thompson. And we're going to talk a little bit about her. But yeah, I, this is actually my first um, Funko action figure. And I just ordered the one for Heimdall. Um, it just Alba's character and I'm probably gonna order Thor and um, Incredible Hulk as well. Oh, and Hela. Yes, she's wonderful. Kate Blanchett just rocks this movie. But anyway, um, I gotta tell you, um, I'm a Marvel fan. You know, some movies I like more than others. Um, the Thor franchise for me has always been sort of the MCU's Achilles heel, in my opinion. Um, the first uh, Thor that was directed by um, Kenneth Branagh, I kind of liked it. You know, I thought it was cool. I actually thought that the uh, first half of the movie that took place um, in Thor's home world, Asgard, was more interesting. Um, you know, Kenneth Branagh is a classically trained actor. He's one of, you know, wonderful actor, wonderful director. And I thought that the scenes in Asgard were the stronger parts of the first Thor movie it had very Shakespearean feel to it, right? And then once Thor came to Earth, the second half of the movie just did not work for me. And I think a lot of, some of that had to do with Natalie Portman. Um, and someone said this on Twitter and I agree with them. They told me this yesterday. She just always looked uncomfortable and just looked irritated. <laughs> like she was just there for a paycheck, right? And this is nothing against Natalie Portman's um, acting ability. I just think that as far as, you know, comic book movies and, you know, some actors, it's just not for them, especially if you're, you know, acting against green screen, uh, green screen and a lot of CGI. I just don't think that's Natalie Portman's thing. So there was that. I didn't really think that she had a lot of chemistry with Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor. Um, I thought Kat Dennings was funny. Um, Stellan Skarsgård was cool. Um, so that was the first Thor. I was like, eh. Then the second Thor came out. Um, you know, I was a little bit more excited for that one because Alan Taylor directed that one and Alan Taylor um, works on Game of Thrones. So I kind of thought, oh, okay, well, if you kind of bring that whole sensibility of the, you know, the epicness and the battles, you know what I mean? And the, and the you know, interpersonal relationships of Game of Thrones. And if you transfer that to Thor, that might work. Again, the second Thor... Some elements work, some didn't work that well for me. If you ask me who the villain of the second Thor is, girl, I don't know. I don't even remember. I, it just really wasn't that memorable to me. Um, um, I thought Rene Russo was actually pretty cool as Thor's mom. Um, and then, you know, no spoilers here. They killed off her character. Um, you know, I think for the second Thor, it, it was pretty much Loki who carried, Tom Hiddleston pretty much carried Thor. And I think throughout all of that, I feel like in the first Thor and the second Thor, it felt like um, the writers and the directors of the first movies, they were trying to figure out who Thor was, right? He's the God of Thunder. How does he fit into this? And it, it seems that Chris was trying to work with them to try to figure that out, right? Um, and what was interesting to me is that the first Avengers movie um, that was directed um, the first Thor, uh, the first Avengers movie, I actually thought that the Thor character showed some spark. No pun intended. Um, I thought he was actually kind of funny, right? So he had like these really cool one-liners, you know, like when they told, you know, they were giving them a list of what um, Loki had done and he was like, he's adopted. And I, that was actually one of my favorite lines in Avengers. So I was like, okay, well, maybe if they can, you know, bring that to the Thor franchise that would be cool. And so I think with Thor Ragnarok, um, it was just, it's this synergy, right? Where I think 
um, the director, Taika Watiti. Um, he's a known, a very well-known indie director, and he's hilarious, right? And I think what happened was that I think Taika really took a look. And if you watch Thor Ragnarok, you can see that Taika and the screenwriters, they really did their homework. They studied all of the movies. They studied all the previous Thor movies. They studied the previous Avengers movies and even the Captain America movie. So their continuity within the MCU, you will see present, no spoilers, there are, the continuity flows through Thor Ragnarok. And that would just made me so happy. So there's no jumping the sharks at all. Um, but yeah, I think Taika realized that um, Chris Hemsworth, his strong point is that he's actually funny. He has a really strong sense of humor. And I think, you know, we get so caught up in how Chris Hemsworth look. I mean, he's gorgeous. He kind of looks like a god, right? He looks like a Norse god. Um, and I think, you know, doing the Ghostbusters movie, um, you know, hosting Saturday Night Live, which really sold me on that. I was because Saturday Night Live, it's it's live, it's improvised. Well, you know, kind of. Um, and I think that is Chris Hemsworth's strong point is his human. He is his humor. He can jump from drama to humor. And so I think Taika really honed in on that. And he was like, okay, we're gonna run with this. We're gonna make this movie funny. And so Ragnarok is really like this really delicious mix and homage of like all your favorite 80s movies right it's very flash gordon it's heavy metal um you know it's conan the barbarian all of those epic adventure movies that you loved from the 80s that were you know kind of cheesy and ridiculous but so much fun and taika just leans into that and and through the whole cast mark ruffalo uh you know um tessa thompson uh, Kate Blanchett, who is like, again, you know, like this epic act actress, right? Um, Oscar winning actress, even when she plays Hela, who is um, basically the, the um, villainess of Thor Ragnarok. She's, by the way, the MCU's first female villainess, and she does a fantastic job, right? So, you know, she basically comes back to Asgard to reclaim her throne. She's like, okay guys i'm taking over and kate just has so much fun with this role like they're just chewing up the scenery and it's just like this movie is just like this two hour wink right and i think what was so great about ragnarok is that and it's not easy to do this is that um taika and the screenwriters basically kind of were poking fun right at the previous thor movies not in a very not in a disrespectful way but it's very much like wink wink throughout the whole movie and they make fun of thor they kind of make fun of his you know fun of his relationship with uh loki right because it's supposed to be like this shakespearean tragedy right two brothers you know cain and abel and they're just like yeah we're just gonna make fun of that you know what i mean and so I just was just watching it and I, from the very first scene, you are just gonna laugh from the start to the end. It's so good, right? And especially the movie starts, I guess, basically in hell, right? Or their version of hell. And then, you know, it goes to Asgard, then it goes to Earth. And then, you know, it just goes from these different, um, all these different areas, but yet it still keeps the momentum going and that's not easy that is not an easy thing to do um you know for a movie like this of, of this scope but taika runs a tight ship right he knows when to be funny he knows when to go all in he knows when to pull it back and i think he really knows he he's really nailed these characters um loki to me has always been a little bit on the serious side he takes himself way too seriously but in this movie i think again taika really um, you know, uses Tom Middle Hiddleston's comic timing um, in a in a really good way in this movie. So I was even the scenes with him and Thor have a little bit of a different tone to it. Um, yeah, it was so good. It was so good. It's so much fun. So much action. And can we talk about? Okay, so let's get to who I want to talk about. Right, um, Tessa Thompson. Tessa Thompson is fantastic in Valkyrie. Now I haven't read the I haven't read the Thor comics. I read them here and there. Um, you know the Valkyries were basically like this very fierce um, regiment of uh, female 
soldiers who uh, protect Asgard, right? And so Tessa's character is a former Valkyrie, right? Something tragic happens, you'll find out uh, when you watch the movie. And so she's lost, right? You know, if you see the trailer, she basically, you know, takes Thor in um, for a bounty, right? And then Thor is put into like this arena where he has to fight like these other aliens, right? It's, 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 a, it's, it's blood sport. That's what the planet does. And Jeff Goldberg plays Game Master. Like that's his thing, right? And, and Jeff Goldblum is hilarious, by the way. Um, and so Valkyrie has kind of lost her way. But the thing that I love about Tessa's character, and particularly with the Valkyrie character, is that, you know, number one, we so very, we so rarely get this kind of representation as far as women of color superheroes. Yes, we do have um, Gamora, who is played by Zoe Saldana in um, um, Guardians of the Galaxy. We have Poem Clementi, right, who plays um, Mantis. She was introduced in Gal Gal uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So we have two women of color um, superheroes or comic book characters in Guardians of the Galaxy, although they are covered by makeup and, you know, prosthetic, so you, sometimes you forget, right? Sometimes I forget Gamora is a black woman. But yeah, with Tessa, number one, we have a visibly black mixed race woman in this role. No um, CGI, no make, you know, makeup. All she has is sort of like the war paint on her face. That's it. And I gotta tell you, like it, for me being a nerd right this black girl who's watched comic books and all the time you know every comic book movie I've ever watched it's like god when are we ever gonna when am I gonna get to see someone who looks like myself when are we gonna get to blow shit up and when are we gonna you know just cut loose and Valkyrie is that chick she is edgy she doesn't give a fuck <laughs> and I love that and 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 I love that she doesn't fall into any of these tropes that we usually tend to see that black women or women of color tend to fall into she's not the mammy she is not there to listen to thor's problems or or loki's problems she's not there to make them better people she's not the love interest um you know she's not the magical negro that's there to make things better for them she's got her own stuff she's got her own problems um you know but she comes she decides that you know she's gonna partner up with thor you'll see why and how but I just love that she was just this badass chick and she is just reckless her I I think Valkyrie's um entrance is one of the best opening scenes of any character introduced in the MCU you'll see what I'm talking about and it it's, and you can tell that Tessa just is having so much fun in this role and I think that's what really sells it like yes the representation matters of course but of course Tessa you know is a super talented actress and she understands you know yeah I have this you know um duty that I have to represent women of color and I have to represent black women but f that I'm just gonna take this role and I'm just gonna run with it and that's what they're supposed and that's what you know um black actresses want right because um and Viola Davis's acceptance speech in the Emmys, isn't that what she says? She was like, it's not that, you know, black actresses or women of, actresses of color don't have the talent. We're just lacking the opportunity. And I just really want to give a shout out to Marvel and Taika for race bending um, Valkyrie. They could have easily done the okie doke in the comic book. Um, Valkyrie is blonde. She is white. They could have given it to, I don't know, any name your vanilla blonde actress in Hollywood they could have given that to her but I really love the fact that they were like we're just gonna race bend her um you know and the race is not really essential to Valkyrie's character so it's totally fine um and Val I, I gotta tell you she is great she is wonderful and she's just so kick-ass and she just has great chemistry with Tom Hiddleston with Chris Hemsworth with Mark Ruffalo I mean, watching Tessa, you would never guess that this is her first movie um, with these actors. She just blends with them so well, and that's a testament to um, the directing and the talent of this cast. Um, and my second, char second character I got to talk about is the Hulk, right? The last time we saw the Hulk was at the end of um, uh, Avengers Ultron, Age of Ultron, and we basically saw him going away in, in a ship, right? And so we find him on this planet, right? Hulk is on this planet and he's this huge celebrity, right? Because he's basically been crushing everybody in the arena. 
Um, and so, like you saw in the trailer, he meets Thor, right? And so I just love the friendship and the relationship between, uh, you know, Thor and the Hulk and then Thor and um, Bruce Banner. Is it David Banner? I get that mix, mixed up. Um, but yeah, Mark Ruffalo and Chris Hemsworth had me rolling. They are so funny. Whether he's the Hulk or whether, you know, when he turns back human, uh, Mark Ruffalo is just great. Um, I read that um, the scenes with the Hulk, Mark Ruffalo, that is Mark Ruffalo when he is playing the Hulk. They just CGI'd him. You know, he kind of wears like this bodysuit with these weird balls or whatever. And I think that definitely is an improvement, right? Because if you watch the first um, two Hulk movies, I'm not sure if they use that same... Um, if they use that same technology, but this one is definitely improved. And I, I was watching the movie and I forgot, I like, I was just looking at the Hulk like he was a character. And I think that's key is that the Hulk is a character, right? Because usually, you know, the way that it's framed, the Hulk is sort of like this dark side to um, Banner, right? And, you know, he's like this ugly monster, but, you know, and he's just reckless and destroying everything. But in Ragnarok, he actually has a sense of humor. Like, you know, the, um, the Hulk is a character. And, and somehow the writers and Taika were really able to hone in on that and make him three-dimensional. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to watch it. And I don't know what Marvel needs to do. I, from what I understand, um, I think Universal has the rights to the Hulk franchise. And so I think they need to buy it back, right? Um, Disney and Marvel can certainly afford it. Bring it back because I know for a fact that I would love to see a Hulk franchise. Um, you know, we've had three actors play the Hulk, right? Um, I've loved all of them, but I do think that Mark Ruffalo brings a certain quality to uh, Banner and the Hulk that I really like. And so, yeah, I would definitely want to see him get his own franchise but yeah this is a dope movie I, I can't throw any spoilers because I don't want to spoil it for you but um I would love for you guys to watch this um after you watch this review um you know comment underneath let's talk and I'm thinking what we'll, we what we can probably do and I'm gonna work on this all next week we can do our first live stream right where we can actually talk Spoilers and all, if you've seen um, Thor Ragnarok and, you know, because um, the ending of Ragnarok, um, I actually screened it with a, a really good friend of mine. Um, after the movie, we were talking about this movie for like three hours afterwards. We had dinner, we were talking on the way home, we were still talking about it, and that's how you know that the movie is really good, right? Um, and so I have a few theories um, as to the ending of Ragnarok, some pretty interesting things happen and I have a feeling that Taika and the writers had a political slant in that ending that's all I can say <laughs> um but I, I I think it was really interesting because I'm still thinking about it a week later and I'm like wow y'all really did that <laughs> especially for an MCU movie I mean and and I think this is the great thing with Ragnarok and the upcoming um, Black Panther movie. And I, I mean, we can even trace this back to the Captain America movies. The Captain America movies have always been pretty political, right? And the Avengers too, to an extent. Um, I think that having directors of color like Taika and um, Ryan Coogler and hopefully more directors of color, women of color will, will be joining, um, you know, in phase four, is that they can inject real life politics, real life issues in there, right? And not keep the MCU in a bubble, right? Because I remember when I watched Civil War last year, right? Remember it's towards the end when Tony goes to visit um, them on the, you know, in the, the floating prison. And when he goes to speak to Anthony Mackie's character, right? And then Anthony Mackie made a joke about Mark Furman. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> And if you don't know, Mark Furman was one of the detectives in the O.J. Simpson case. And, you know, the rumor was he was pretty racist and that he tried to tamper with the evidence. So I just thought that that was, like, pretty amazing that they dropped that 
casually in an MCU movie. And so I think moving forward with uh, Thor and particularly with Black Panther because that movie is going to be political <laughs> as fuck. Um, and I, I love that Kevin Feige and, you know, Marvel are just kind of like loosening the reins. Like, yes, it is a Disney property, but like, you know, they're 10 years in. Um, you know, they've got a lot more movies. You've got the Captain Marvel movie that's going to be coming with Brie Larson. You've got to loosen up those reins and you've, you've got to let the real world bleed into the MCU. And I think that is great. And I love the fact that um, when you watch Thor Ragnarok, even Asgard, right? I could be, I could be wrong, but even the Asgard in this um, edition or this this Thor movie looks a lot more diverse. Like even background, you're seeing black people, Asian people, Latino people, um, you know. And I was just like, whoa, this is this is great. You know what I mean? So um, Disney, Marvel, whatever you have to pay, Taika to stay in the MCU, please keep him there, okay? That, because listen, this whole Marvel versus DC, whatever, I mean, you know, DC's doing what they got to do. Marvel has got to continue to evolve, right? If they want to keep competing, right? You know, you've got to, you know, bring in more directors of color, bring in more women, bring in, and I would really love to see some screenwriters of color. I know Nat Moore, um, you know, is a writer, uh, Joe, Joe Robert Cole, they are black men who work in, in the MCU. I would definitely love to see more uh, screenwriters of color that are writing for the MCU, fran uh, the MCU uh, franchises. That would be great. But yeah, I am just going to say, go see Thor Ragnarok. It's a bop. <laughs> it is a bop. And, and let me tell you something. These reviews that they're getting, um, yeah, I didn't get my Disney check because, you know, that's the rumor every time... Marvel gets a good review that somehow we're being paid by Disney and yeah, whatever. I ain't get my check yet, but, um, it's a great movie and yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.